Welcome to Electron Online, and now the sixth method of solving two linear equations is called the matrix method, or using matrices. So, in case in point, here are the same two equations we've been using before. And notice that if we write this equation in this format, with the x and the y on one side, and the constant on the other side, so this becomes 2x minus y, when we bring the minus y across, and then the minus 5 to the other side becomes plus 5, switch the equation around, we get this. And the second equation, move the y to the other side, we get x plus y equals 4 on the right side. So once we have it in that format, this can be written in matrix format as this matrix times this matrix easing being equal to that matrix. Notice that this is simply the coefficients of the x and the y's on the left side of the two equal signs. This is simply the two variables x and y, and this is simply the two constants on the right side. And notice if you multiply the two left matrices together, you get 2x plus a negative y equals 5. So 2x minus y equals 5, and x plus y equals 4. x plus y equals 4. So this is exactly the same as what we have over there. Now the nice thing about matrices is that we can solve for x and y by saying the following thing. That x is equal to, when we bring the a to the other side of the equation sign, this becomes the inverse of a times b. So if we find the inverse of the matrix a, and we multiply the times b, we get the, va the value for x and y. So all we have to do is find the inverse of a. So this becomes x and y is equal to the inverse of a times the matrix b, and the matrix b is still 5 and 4, which are the two constants on the right side of the equal sign. So how do you find the inverse of a? Well, there's different methods, but I'll show you this one method, the more general approach of finding the inverse of a matrix. So here we have the matrix A, 2, 1, negative 1, 1. And then we, we go ahead and draw a line here and write 1, 1, 0, 0. This is basically the unit matrix, so to speak, with just ones across diagonal and zero everywhere else. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into the unit matrix like that, and whatever the values are here, that will be the inverse of the matrix. All right, and this is how we do that. What we want is we want to turn this into, and let me just put on the side here in a different color, we want the left side of this to become 1, 1, 0, 0, like this, and then having whatever else on the other side. So how do you turn this into 1, 1, 0, 0, like that? Well, the first thing we might want to do is flip the two rows over. If we bring this row to the top and that row to the bottom, the 1 will now be where we want it. Okay, so what we're going to do, our first operation, is replace R1 and R2. We're going to interchange those two rows. So when we do that, we get the following. We get um, 1, 1, 0, 1, and then the bottom row comes to the, to the, the top row comes to the bottom, 2, negative 1, 1, and 0. So all we've done is interchange the two rows, but now I have a 1 in the upper left corners, which is what I want. Now I want to turn the 2 into a 0. I can do that by multiplying the top row by negative 2 and adding it to the bottom row. So what that means is that the bottom row, row 2, will become negative 2, which is basically the negative of this number, times the first row here, row 1, and adding it to the second row. And we do that for all four elements. If we do that, we get the following. Notice that only the second row is changing, the first row is not, so that stays the way it is. So that's 1, 1, 0, 1. The bottom row, however, notice I'm going to take minus 2 times 1, add it to this, I get 0. Minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, add it to minus 1, I get minus 3. Minus 2 times 0 is 0, add it to 1, stays 1. Minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, add it to 0, I get minus 2. All right, now I'm halfway there. Notice I have a 1 and a 0 right here is exactly what I wanted. Now the next thing is I'm going to make this into a 1. I can do that by dividing this whole second row by negative 3. If I divide the, this by negative 3, then I get a positive 1 there. So my second row is now going to become um, the, the second row divided by negative 3. So if I divide every element in the second row by negative 3, I'll get a positive 1 there, and of course we'll see what we get over there. So if we do that, Notice the first row is not changing, that stays at 1, 1, 0, 1. 
This will still be a zero, but now here I'm going to divide that by negative three, so I get a positive one. A one divided by negative three, I get a minus one third, and a negative two divided by negative three gives me a positive two thirds. Now I'm almost there. Notice I have a one and a one here, which is what I want. I have a zero there. I still need to get rid of this one there, turn that into a zero. The way I can do that is I can take the first row and replace it by the negative of the second row added to the first row. So minus one times the second row added to the first row will get rid of this one and turn it into a zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so notice that the second row is not going to change. That stays exactly the same. So I get zero and one. I get minus a third and positive two thirds. So minus one times the second row, minus one times zero, that's still zero, add it to one, the one doesn't change. Minus one times this gives me minus one, add it to the one gives me zero. And notice I have accomplished what I want to accomplish. This is now what I want it to be. So this will now become the inverse of matrix A. So negative one times a negative one third is a positive one third, add it to zero, gives me plus one third. And the negative one times two thirds gives you negative two thirds, added to one gives me a positive one third. This here is my inverse of the matrix A, which is what goes in there. So this becomes one third for that element, one third for that element, minus a third for this element, and two thirds for that element. And so now that means I can find the values for x and y by simply multiplying those two matrices together, which means x is going to be equal to one-third, and I might as well write in, in the matrix format like that, so x, is, x and y is going to be equal to, if I multiply this together, I get the following. One-third times five, that's one-third times five, plus, so the way it goes is I move to the right, on this matrix and I move down on this matrix. So this times this plus this times this. I move to the right on the top here, I move down on this matrix. So one third times four. And then I go to the bottom matrix, so I go minus one third times five, plus I move this one to the right and this one down. So it's like this, and then two thirds times four. Okay, now I have to simplify that because notice in the top I just get a single number and here I get a single number corresponding to the values for x and y. So let's do that. So x and y is equal to, here this will be 5 thirds plus 4 thirds. And on the bottom I'll get minus 5 thirds plus 8 thirds. And again I need to simplify that so I get the values for x and y is equal to 5 thirds plus 4 thirds is 9 thirds, 9 divided by 3 is 3, so x equals 3, and minus 5 thirds plus 8 thirds is 3 thirds, 3 thirds is the same as 1, so the values for x is 3 and the value for y is 1, and there's the solution. Those are the two points, or that's the one point, that's the x and y value of the one point where the two lines cross, represented by those two equations. Now you may say, well, the previous methods you showed us are much easier than this one. And yes, for something that looks like this, it's fairly complicated to go through the process. However, there's some very powerful techniques here. And for more complicated situations, this is definitely the way to go. On top of that, these methods can be programmed into a computer or a calculator and can be very easily then used to do multiple calculations for multiple problems like that in a very short period of time. So it's a very powerful technique well worth learning how to do. And that's how we use matrices to solve two linear equations.